Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 11 for the course Corporate Social Responsibility NGT 610. The chapter that we are discussing or we are going to discuss in this lecture is chapter number 3 which is about the stakeholders theory. The learning objectives that we have discussed before as well are these. You need to understand the definition of stakeholders, something that we have done. You should know exactly who stakeholders are by now. Understand why the stakeholder theory is important, something that we have done again. We, we do realize the importance of stakeholders theory because we say that shareholders theory is not enough. Learn the taxonomy of stakeholders. We've dis discussed different classifications, four different classifications of stakeholders. Analyze stakeholders' relationships. How would they interact? What are the different types? The customers, the government, the regulators, the suppliers, the employees. And then understand the holistic growth through tangible and intangible manifestation in a corporate business and see how they relate to the concept of corporate social responsibility and organizations in general. We're going to continue with the various things various things in an organization that has an impact on uh, businesses and impact on corporate social responsibility and then we're also discussing the various dilemmas that uh, organizations uh, or corporations can have. For example, in the last lecture we discussed that uh, generally organizations are confused uh, in terms of should we go for skill development or should we go for value development? Should we go for in, uh, for using the intelligent mind only or for using the intelligent brain only or should we also motivate people to use their emotional inten and intelligence as well? But what we have come up with, right, what I think is the perfect solution is that this is the combination of things which works very well. You need to have a very balanced approach. You need to walk in the middle, no extremities, no extreme areas, extremes for Janaki Zurat nahi. So when I say intelligent brain or emotional intelligence, I say ideal is to use both. You need to have your emotions and you need to use your intelligence as well. Then we say skill development or value development, no, it is not or. We're not saying skill development or value development. What we're advocating is skill development and value development as well, whereby the person is developing skills as well and the person is motivated to use his and the person is motivated to have a strong value system and to use that value system whether the decision making is being done or whenever actions are being done or whenever there's something going on in the organization. Next, that, uh, the last slide that we did in the previous lec uh, lecture, this is where we're going to start this lecture, importance of ethics. So in order to have a healthy and wholesome uh, growth in the organization, you need to incorporate ethics in every process of the organization. The main concern is to make profits and you need to realize that ethics has to be proactive part of the business if profits are to be sustained. So it is important that if you have profits to sustain long term, ke liye, it is important that you uh, do ethical activities. Organizations have to presuppose accountability and integrity for perfect business processes. So integrity and accountability play a very, very important role. I gave you the reference of Satyam Computers. Again, go back to that and just see that because of lack of accountability, uh, the company faced the problems uh, that it faced. So that means that knowledge has no value if it is not creative. So for anything to be creative, creativity is knowledge, se, right? But if your knowledge valuable, then it is creative. Nahi hai. So for, for example, when we talk about especially when you air travel, there are so security issues everywhere, right? After 9-11, and air travel, and you talk liquid bombs, ki baat karte hai, which can blow off a plane, knowledge to use hui hai. The person who made or who is making liquid bombs, is a very intelligent person. Hoga. Maybe he or she is a genius, right? But kya wo knowledge jiske through wo liquid bomb create ho raha hai is that knowledge creating value no it is not creating value and since that knowledge is not creating value that may, that basically means as as this uh, uh, slide says ke agar wo cheez value create nahi if agar wo cheez ki koi value nahi hai then that thing is not creative so knowledge which is creating liquid warm is not adding value or is not creating value then that particular knowledge is not creative and that particular knowledge is not good creativity always relates to positive sustainable growth why because creativity ke liye sustainable growth bahut zaruri hai 
a thing can only be called creative if it results in sustainable growth. So, maybe example make it the person who is making liquid bomb is very knowledgeable, is very wise, might have, might be a genius, but his knowledge is creative. Nahi hai. Is liye creative nahi hai? Because that person's knowledge is not creating value and that person's knowledge is not con contributing to sustainable growth. So that is why we don't knowledge it creative. Nahi on, the, on the other hand, a person who has made a vaccine uh, for a disease, now that knowledge is creative because that knowledge is adding value and ha has a positive sustainable uh, and has a positive impact on the sustainable growth of people. And that is what makes a difference between the right and the wrong profession कि आप अपनी नॉलेज को किस तरीके से यूज कर रहे हैं अगर आप अपनी नॉलेज को पॉजिटिवली यूज कर रहे हैं सही तरीके से यूज कर रहे हैं वैल्यू एडिशन के लिए यूज कर रहे हैं सस्टेनेबल ग्रोथ के लिए यूज कर रहे हैं देन यू आर द राइट प्रोफेशनल ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ यू आर यूजिंग योर नॉलेज फॉर रॉन्ग थिंग्स फॉर रॉन्ग एक्टिविटीज फॉर मे बी लोगों से पैसा लेने के लिए या लोगों को फीस करने के लिए या फ्रॉड करने के लिए देन यूर योर नॉलेज इज नॉट क्रिएटिव बिकॉज इट इज नॉट एडिंग वैल्यू एंड इट इज इट इज नॉट हैविंग अ पॉजिटिव इम्पैक्ट ऑन द सोसाइटी एज वेल सो डिसीजन के जी राइट या रॉन्ग क्या है दैट इज वॉट वॉट मेक्स डिसीजन राइट पीपल आर सपोज टू मेक लाइफ मोर कम्फर्टेबल बिकॉज जो बंदा सही साइट पर होता है इट इज गोइंग चाहे वो छोटी सी चीज हो चाहे वो कॉमन पिन हो या एरोप्लेन की बात कर रहे हो A person is right when he or she is going to use his or her knowledge in a way that is going to make life easy for people, that is going to uh, remove harm from the lives of people. So that is the difference between the right person and the wrong person or more uh, specifically that is the difference between the right professional and the wrong professional. The purpose of business is to create material wealth so that life can be made enjoyable. As a reward for this society allows them to make profits and material wealth is of value if it results in human preservation. So three things are business ke liye bahut zaruri hai. Uh, again, ab tak ab shayad ye bhi sochte ho ki ji, ये सीएसआर में हम एक ही चीज को बार बार क्यों रिपीट कर रहे हैं बिकॉज हम एक चीज को बहुत मल्टीपल एंगल से देख रहे हैं सेम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सेम कॉर्पोरेशन सेम प्रोफेशनल्स वर रनिंग योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट परस्पेक्टिव बहुत ज्यादा ज्यादा हो गए पहले हमने कहा कि जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के इकोनॉमिक लीगल डिस्क्रिप्शनरी एथिकल मॉरल ड्यूटीज होती हैं रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज होती हैं अब हम कहते हैं उसी चीज को हमने रिफ्रेस किया रिडिफाइन किया उसी चीज को हम एक अलग एंगल से देखना शुरू हुआ हम कहते हैं कि जी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का पर्पज क्या है ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का पर्पज ये है कि वो मटीरियल वेल्थ क्रिएट कर और ऐसी मटेरियल वेल्थ एंड ऐसे मटेरियल वेल्थ इट बेसिकली मींस डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट्स इट बेसिकली मींस डिफरेंट गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज सो द पर्पस ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज टू क्रिएट मटेरियल वेल्थ इट इज टू क्रिएट गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज व्हिच कैन बेनिफिट एन ऑर्डिनरी पीपल नाउ जब वो मटेरियल वेल्थ क्रिएट हो जाती है विच इज बेनिफिटिंग और विच इज मेकिंग लाइफ एंजॉयबल देन एज अ रिवॉर्ड फॉर दैट फॉर द क्रिएशन ऑफ दैट मटेरियल वेल्थ द सोसाइटी इज अलाउिंग देम टू मेक प्रॉफिट सो सोसाइटी इज गिविंग देम दैट रिवॉर्ड के अच्छा सिंस यू क्रिएटिंग दीज पीपल आर गोइंग टू बाय इट फ्रॉम यू एंड यू कैन मेक प्रॉफिट एंड यू कैन अर्न योर रेवन्यूज हाव एवर द क्वेश्चन इज वट एवर मटीरियल वेल्थ इज बींग क्रिएटेड it has to preserve human uh, it has to work in accordance with human preservation so when i say i am not going to use cosmetics which has been tested on on animals that means ke when companies are testing on on animals then that basically means ke ji कोई ना कोई एनिमल खत्म हुआ या उस, 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 उसको उसको यूज किया गया या उसकी उसकी जो हेल्थ या एनिमल को ऊपर शायद एडवर्स इफेक्ट्स हुए हो जस्ट बिकॉज समबडी एक्स वाइज यू वांटेड टू यूज कॉस्मेटिक्स लेकिन जब एक ऐसी कॉस्मेटिक कंपनी जो कि कॉस्मेटिक बनाती है और एनिमल्स को पर यूज या एनिमल्स पर टेस्ट नहीं करती है तो व्हाट दे डूइंग इज ये सिर्फ मेकिंग गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज व्हिच मेक्स लाइफ ऑफ सो मेनी वुमेन सो मच बेटर बिकॉज दे मेक देम लुक ब्यूटीफुल नाउ एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस क्रिएशन ऑफ कॉस्मेटिक ये देर अर्निंग प्रॉफिट बिकॉज द सोसाइटी इज गिविंग दम द राइट टू अर्न प्रॉफिट एज अ रिवॉर्ड एंड फाइनली वेन दे आर नॉट टेस्टिंग द कॉस्मेटिक्स ऑन एनिमल्स दे आर प्रिजर्विंग लाइफ एंड वेन आई से लाइफ इट्स नॉट ह्यूमन you and me we're talking about it's everybody so chahe wo koi bhi animal ho chahe wo natural habitats ho chahe wo trees ho chahe wo koi bhi ho it is the organization's responsibility it is the purpose of the organization to preserve life around them
Understand the difference between need, want and greed. Organizations, professionals, managers, management has to understand the difference between need and want and greed. Selfish individuals, individuals who only think about themselves, individuals who are only concerned with creating material wealth, individuals who are only concerned with profitability and uh, money, they're the ones uh, selfish individuals preservation is fueled by want and greed and hence money so they are the ones who are sirf apne bare mein sochte hain jinka sirf economic transaction motive hota hai aur only thinking about making money they are the ones who who are fueled or who get energized by fulfilling the needs and the greeds of people so jab bhi aap kisi ke sirf aap want ke bare mein nahi sochoge because want wo compulsory cheeze hain jo ke logon ko khareedni hai and and they have to be provided with those things but needs are something jo ke with money aata hai because wants generally bahut basics hoti hain usme aapke bahut saare rules regulations aa jate hain kyunki aap unki prices bahut zyada increase nahi kar sakte but with reference to needs you can spend millions and billions of people right so when i say ke ji uh, ab if, if i don't know if you read this but now you and i if we have the money can go and see the moon and we can go on the moon because as a private ek uh, aisi organization us mein hai jisne jo ki ab ab shuttles mein टूरिस्ट टूरिस्ट को लेकर जाएगी फॉर अ ट्रिप टू मून एंड इट्स गोइंग टू कॉस्ट मिलियंस एंड बिलियंस एक बंदे का जो टिकट होगा वही मिलियन डॉलर्स का होगा सो वट आर डूइंग इज के क्या वो कुछ फायदा वट देर डूइंग इज जिस थिंकिंग अबाउट द मनी देर गुड दे गोइंग टू मेक दे गोइंग टू मेक एंड विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दैट दे डूइंग इज देर फुलफिलिंग द नीड्स ऑफ पीपल ओनली एंड देर फुलफिलिंग द वॉन्ट्स ऑफ पीपल नॉट द नीड्स ऑफ पीपल एंड देर उनके उनका जो मोटिवेशनल फैक्टर है दैट इज फ्यूल्ड बाय वांट एंड ग्रीड एंड जब भी आप वांट और ग्रीड की सिर्फ बात करेंगे और नीड की बात नहीं करेंगे तो फिर आप सिर्फ पैसे की बात करें बिकॉज इट इज द नीड जो कि इम्पोर्टेंट होती है इट इज द नीड जो कि जो कि जरूरी होती है इंडिविजुअल के यूजली नीड पर यू डोंट यू डोंट अर्न अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉफिट ऑन नीड यू अर्न अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉफिट ऑन ग्रीड यू अर्न अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉफिट ऑन वॉन्ट्स बट नीड्स पर आप पैसा अर्न नहीं कर सकते सो जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सिर्फ वॉन्ट और ग्रीड पर फोकस करती हैं या जो वो प्रोफेशनल्स या वो मैनेजमेंट जो सिर्फ वॉन्ट और ग्रीड पर फोकस करते हैं दे आर दंस हुर रनिंग आफ्टर मनी एंड दे आर दंस जो कि सिर्फ इकोनॉमिक ट्रांजेक्शन को ही देखते हैं the next thing that we going to discuss with reference to the with reference to the impact and dilemmas of business on corporate social responsibility is a tussle between means and ends now means are as important as the ends means is the things that you do to achieve the end result or the activities that you do to achieve the objective so the objective or the 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 जो आप जो चीज आप अचीव करना चाहते हैं वो एंड है और वो सारे काम जो आप करते हैं टू अचीव दैट समथिंग आर योर मींस राइट सो इन अदर वर्ड्स अगर मुझे इसको रिलेट करना चाहिए जो फिनिश लाइन होती है दैट इज योर एंड एंड जितना आप भागते हैं और प्रेपरेशन कर रहे हैं और ट्रेनिंग कर रहे हैं दो ज्यादा मीन सेट यू हैव सो द क्वेश्चन इज कि जब आप किसी चीज की अचीवमेंट की बात करते हैं गोल्स की अचीवमेंट की बात करते हैं या ऑब्जेक्टिव्स की अचीवमेंट की बात करते हैं उस केस में योर मीन्स आर एज इम्पोर्टेंट एज द एंड ना वेन दैट इज ट्रू जब आपके मीन्स आर इम्पोर्टेंट Uh, are as important as the ends and that frees you from stress and fear when one is committed to means and end so that means ke jab aap means or ends dono ke bare mein committed hote hain and you're as interested in the means as the ends then automatically you're free from stress and you're free from tension and you're free from fear because you know that what you have done is the best that you could have done you know ke ji main isse maine jitna main kuch jitna main kar saka maine kiya aur agar itna karne ke bawajood bhi maine achieve nahi kiya then maybe yahi hona tha ya shayad yahi likha tha ya shayad कुछ ऐसी चीजें थी जो कि बियॉन्ड माय कंट्रोल थी या शायद फेट ही यही थी कि मेरे साथ ऐसे होना था ऑटोमेटिकली आपके स्ट्रेस लेवल आपके एंजाइटी लेवल आपके फियर्स आपकी एक्सेप्टेंस बेहतर हो जाती है डिफीट की बिकॉज एक एक फॉर एग्जांपल जस्ट लुक एट दिस फ्रॉम टू डिफरेंट सिनारियोज एक सिनारी यह है कि आपने मेहनत नहीं की आपने काम नहीं किया और आप हार गए आपसे काम नहीं हुआ उस केस में आपके रिग्रेट्स भी होते हैं फेयर भी होता है मैं इतना कर लेता मैं उतना कर लेता मैं ऐसे हो जाता मैं वैसे हो जाता मैं उसको कह देता दूसरा सुनारी है कि आपने खूब मेहनत की खूब काम किया खूब पढ़ाई की सब कुछ किया फिर भी आपका काम नहीं हुआ उस केस में यू से यार आई डिड माई बेस्ट 
आई डेट वट एवर आई कुड डू एंड फिर भी नहीं हुआ तो शायद इस मल्ला में की बेहतरी आई डोंट नो शायद इसको ऐसे ही होना था शायद ऐसे कुछ फैक्टर्स थे जो कि अनकंट्रोलेबल थे आई डोंट मुझे नहीं फर्क पड़ता आई कुड नॉट हैव डन मोर देन दिस दोनों अप्रोचेज में दिज अ डिफरेंस दिज अ ह्यूज डिफरेंस एक इज फुल ऑफ पॉजिटिविटी एंड अदर वन इज फुल ऑफ नेगेटिविटी एक में आप एक्सेप्ट कर रहे हैं आपका फेयर नहीं है आपके स्ट्रेस लेवल्स नहीं है आपकी एंगजाइटी नहीं है दूसरे में आप अपने आप को बहुत बुरा भला कहते हैं कि यार मैंने ऐसे क्यों नहीं किया वैसे क्यों नहीं किया आप उससे में होते हैं दिस एंगर इन यू दिस एंगजाइटी इन यू दिस स्ट्रेस इन यू दिस फेयर इन यू क्या अब मेरे साथ क्या होगा सो दैट इज वाई वी से दैट मीन्स आर एज इम्पोर्टेंट एज दी एंड 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 इफ दैट इज ट्रू तो आपका जो स्ट्रेस है आपकी एंगजाइटी है आपकी टेंशन है वो सब बहुत कंट्रोल्ड होती है दिस जैसे कि दिस डेडिकेशन लीड्स टू अ बैलेंस because your failure then becomes a stepping stone to success and you hoped to try again because once you've done all that you could do and still not achieve it then you then you learn from that entire experience and you learn from that entire episode and and that entire experience becomes the stepping stone for your next step and then you want to try all over again and most probably you're going to succeed the second or the third time similarly aapne itna kuch kiya hota that you don't lose hope you're saying kuch nahi hota agar is dafa nahi agli dafa now ab to mujhe pata hai ki kya karna hai ab to main saath padhai to sab kar hi chuka hu to koi baat nahi agar dobara se paper de dun to so that is the attitude uh, that is important or that is the attitude that you get when you think that means are as important as the ends on the other hand when you only focus कुछ ऑन दी एंड फिर आपका कॉन्सेप्ट भी चेंज हो जाता है आप जब एक और सुनारी हुई है कि जी आप आपने मेहनत ही नहीं की और आपको चीज मिल गई फिर आपको वो खुशी भी नहीं होती देन अगेन अगर आपने मेहनत नहीं की और आपको वो चीज नहीं भी मिली फिर भी आप कहते हो कि यार क्या प्रॉब्लम है फिर आप कंपेरिजन में आ जाते हो आपके अंदर यू यू फुल ऑफ नेगेटिविटी अगेन सो पॉइंट इज के जब भी आप मीन्स और एंड दोनों को इम्पोर्टेंट समझते हैं देन इवन योर फेलियर्स बिकम योर स्टेपिंग स्टोन बिकॉज देन सिंस यू डन सो मच यू नॉट अफ्रेड टू डू मोर सिंस यू डन सो मच यू हैव लर्न फ्रॉम ऑल दैट एक्सपीरियंस एज वेल एंड इट गोज टू हेल्प यू it goes to go it goes to give you hope and it serves as a stepping stone to go further to become successful again now there is no alternative to work it is the motivation which decides whether the result is positive or negative so jo hota nahi ke if i have this glass in front of me and there's water and i say ke ji is it half full or half empty so every one of you who's who's an optimistic is going to say that this is half full and every one of you who's who's a pessimistic is going to say this is half empty it's just pani to utna hi hai बट आप में से आधे इसको हाफ फुल और आप में से आधे इसको हाफ एम टी क्यों कहते हैं बिकॉज बेसिकली आपकी मोटिवेशन फर्क है आपका वे ऑफ ऑब्जर्विंग एनालाइजिंग एंड थिंकिंग का फैक्टर फर्क है दैट इज वाई द वेरी सेम ग्लास विद द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ वॉटर गिवस अ डिफरेंट फीलिंग टू डिफरेंट पीपल सो इफ यू इफ यू बेसिकली अगर आप आप पॉजिटिवली मोटिवेटेड हैं अगर आप आप एक लाइफ को ऐसा देखते हैं कि जी हमने काम करना है मेहनत करनी है दैन यू ऑलवेज गोइंग टू सी इट एज अ हाफ फुल ऑन दी अदर हैंड अगर आपकी मोटिवेशन ऐसे कि यार मेरे साथ तो कुछ अच्छा ही नहीं होता नथिंग इज गोइंग राइट फॉर मी दैन मोस्ट प्रॉब्लम ऑलवेज गोइंग टू सी अ ग्लास हाफ एम टी एंड दैट इज वॉट मेक्स अ डिफरेंस और दैट वॉट दैट इज वॉट मेक्स अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ पॉजिटिव रिजल्ट एंड नेगेटिव रिजल्ट बिकॉज पीपल हुर ऑप्टोमिस्टिक जनरली टेन टू गेट अ पॉजिटिव रिजल्ट शायद पहली दफा में नहीं शायद दूसरी दफा में नहीं बट एट सम पॉइंट इन देर लाइफ दे ऑलवेज गेट अ पॉजिटिव रिजल्ट ऑन द अदर हैंड पीपल हु आर वेरी नेगेटिव इन देर लाइफ वुड टेन टू गेट अ नेगेटिव रिजल्ट ऑल द टाइम अ वेरी स्मॉल एग्जाम्पल आई एम गोइंग अ लिटल ऑफ द ट्रैक बट जस्ट टू बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग हो जाता है कोर्स अगर आप अपने इर्द गिर्द नोटिस करें पीपल वर एक्सट्रीमली फिनिकी अबाउट दम सेल्स ऐसे नहीं ऐसे होना चाहिए ऐसे नहीं वैसे होना चाहिए जनरली उनके साथ ची, उनकी चीजें ज्यादा खराब होती हैं पीपल ऑन दी अदर हैंड ऐसे लोग जो के जो के अपना काम करते हैं देन दे ट्रस्ट पीपल और लोगों को काम दे देते हैं दे लीव इट भाई बंदा स्पेशलिस्ट है काम कर लेगा जनरली उनकी चीजें ज्यादा अच्छी होती हैं एंड दैट इज वॉट वी मीन वेन वी से दैट जो आपकी मोटिवेशन होती है ना दैट इज वॉट मेक्स अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ पॉजिटिव रिजल्ट एंड अ नेगेटिव रिजल्ट आप चीजों को कैसे देखते हैं आप चीजों के बारे में कैसा फील करते हैं अनहैपीनेस अकर्स वन समबडी एल्स अचीव सक्सेस क्विकर द नास्ट बाई यूजिंग अनफेयर मीन्स बट द क्वेश्चन इज दैट हाउ लॉन्ग कैन दैट सक्सेस लास्ट 
very important thing reality check for all of us ki ab hum baat to karte hain means important hai ends important hai hard work important hai positive motivation important hai aap aap aapko step ne failures ko as a stepping stone dek, dekhna chahiye but kitni dafa hamare sath hamare hamare jo circle hai usme hi hota hai ki ji there somebody else for example you sitting in a class and mehnat ki 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 aur aap aapka b grade aaye on the other hand your friend who you knew cheated बहुत ज्यादा उसने चीटिंग की गॉट ने देन यू फील यार मेहनत का क्या फायदा क्या जरूरत है इतनी मेहनत मुझे करने का उसको तो चीटिंग करके उसको तो पूरी रात पार्टी की और पूरा दिन पेपर में चीटिंग करके उसको एक उसका ये आ गया दैट इज द पॉइंट इन टाइम वेन यू फील अनहैपी दैट इज द पॉइंट इन टाइम वेन यू फील डीमोटिवेटेड बट द सिल्वर लाइनिंग इन द क्लाउड इज दैट कब तक चीटिंग करके वो कितने कोर्स में पास होगा और अगर हर कोर्स में भी पास हो गया then kal when that person is going to do a job or when that when that person gets employment tab wo kya karega tab wo kiski cheating karega shayad ye bhi ho sakta hai kal ko final paper mein invigilator ne usko cheating karte hue pakad gaya uska pura semester jo hai wo khatam ho gaya ya usko pura semester mein usko fail kar diya gaya and he had to repeat the semester so you need to think ke yes there would be people around you jo ki unfair means use karke apne kaam kara ke aap se aage chale jayenge but then you need to realize that kab tak wo ye chalayenge aise for example somebody may be this is one of this example is from your books uh, by the way for example is somebody just a force ya power ya pressure use karke ya power use karke let's say promotion kara li but the question is kal ko there's going to be somebody else who has who will have more power than that person then what will that person do so it is best ke aap apne zore bazu par yakeen rakhe and you believe in your hard work only and do the right thing and 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 do what you have to do and acha ab question ye ki ye to hum personal ho gaye bandon ke bare mein hum individuals ke bare mein baat karne lage where would this fit in with reference to organizations you need to realize ke ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को शॉर्ट कम शॉर्ट टर्म के बारे में नहीं सोच रहे हैं आज कितना प्रॉफिट कल कितना प्रॉफिट परसों कितना प्रॉफिट वट दे शुड बी कंसर्न इज विद देर लॉन्ग दे शुड बी कंसर्न विद लॉन्ग टर्म ग्रोथ विद लॉन्ग टर्म प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी सो हाँ कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी के इनिशिएटिव लेकर या एथिकल काम करके शायद शॉर्ट टर्म में प्रॉब्लम आए शायद शॉर्ट टर्म में एक्सपेंसिस ज्यादा हों और प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी कम हो बट on the longer run in that long race those organizations are going to succeed those organizations are going to win who uh, are focusing on on their means on 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 what they're doing on daily basis as well as what they want to achieve in the future as well so that is where it really relates the thing now you need when when we think thinking in terms of organizations and even in terms of uh, individuals as well you need to combine tangible gains with intangible satisfaction bahut zaruri hai ki aap tangible gains jo ke monetary honge extrinsic honge you need to combine that with intrinsic elements and you need to combine them with intrinsic satisfaction question can a business ignore its stakeholders important question ab tak to ye answer aana hi chahiye no did you say no no you don't good for you no organizations cannot ignore their stakeholders it is impossible for organizations to ignore stakeholders agar stakeholders organizations ignore karenge then the organizations ki existence nahi ho sakti then that means that we have to have relationships with stakeholders and, and, and more importantly long term relationships with stakeholders relationship depends upon trust and not skill jo humne pehle baat ki ki ji hum skill development bhi honi chahiye और वैल्यू डेवलपमेंट भी होनी चाहिए बिकॉज रिलेशनशिप्स के लिए जरूरी है इफ यू जस्ट आर फोकसिंग ऑन स्किल देन मोस्ट प्रॉबेबली आप आप रिलेशनशिप डेवलप नहीं करोगे आप वन टाइम ट्रांजेक्शन कर सकोगे आप टू टाइम एक्सचेंज कर सकोगे बट रिलेशनशिप के लिए ट्रस्ट और स्किल दोनों का कंबाइन होना बहुत जरूरी है इफ द इंडिविजुअल इज नॉट वैल्यू ओरिएंटेड हाउ कैन दिस एक्शन और हिज एक्शन कैन बी वैल्यू और जो हम पहले बात कर चुके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टाइम सेल्व कुछ भी नहीं कर सकती सो दैट मीन्स कि अगर मैं खुद सही कोई चीज समझूंगी तो मेरे ऑटोमेटिकली एक्शंस भी सही हो जाएंगे फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई थिंक चीटिंग इज रॉन्ग इफ आई फील बिलीव दैट चीटिंग इज नॉट राइट दैन मोस्ट प्रॉबेबली आई एम नेवर गोइंग टू चीट 
However, if I am the sort के जी जो कहते हैं कि cheating कोई बात नहीं कर सकते हैं circumstances पर depend करता है situation पर depend करता है If I don't know an answer, I will cheat. In that case, most probably, if I will not know an answer, I will cheat. So what is happening is के जो individual की thinking है या जो उसकी value orientation है वो ही उसके actions में आती है If the or if the individual is going to think or will have value orientation here, then automatically that individual or us individual ke jo actions hain, will be value oriented honge. That basically means that businesses depend on the vision. Vision kis ki or vision kis se banti hai? Again, us mein bhi value system bhoat important hota hai. Jo hum pehle bhi baat kar chuke. Individual values, individual ki values, individual ki values, organization ki values. So organizations ke liye jo vision, especially agar hum, hum, aap log management par chuke hain, a number of times in your last degree, management mein the vision or mission statement ki ka bhoat important role hota hai, right? Now vision is achieved through smaller visions because vision is big and phir aap mission ki baat karna shuru kar dete hain. Now to to achieve missions, uh, the organizations have to have sight, insight, and foresight. And that is what this is. That when you mission achievement, ki baat karte, and again, we know what a mission is, right? Mission achievement, ke liye organizations ke paas ye teen elements hone bahut zaruri hai. They should have sight, they should have insight, and they should have foresight. Uh, easy words, mein, sight is your present, insight is your past and foresight is your future. So you have to think about now, you have to learn from what you've done before, and you have to think what you have to do in the future. And that is, jab bhi aap koi decision karte hain, ya jab bhi aap koi decision lete hain, these are the three things that you have to think about whenever you would want to achieve objectives, whenever you want to achieve goals, or whenever you even want to achieve your mission and your vision as well. Sight is day-to-day -day activities. Jo cheez aap daily basis par aaj kaam kar rahe hain, that is what sight is. Insight is debriefing. Debriefing is calm, ho gaya, then everybody sits together and discusses. Ke ji kaise hua, kaise behtar ho sakta tha, kya hona chahiye tha. Appraisal is made of the activities and their results. So that is basically discussing the past. This is what we've done. This is what, this is how, th this is, this is what we've done. These are the mistakes that we did. These are the outcomes that we achieved. Ab isme kya problems ho, isko kaise tarikhe se behtar banaya ja sakta hai. Your foresight is setting the goals towards which a company has to proceed so thinking about the future talking about the future and where you want to go in the future is what your uh, foresight is and and then again each one of them is interconnected with each other because each one of them would relate to one another aap jo aaj present mein karenge usme aap past se learn karte hain because if you learn from a past past that is a very important thing jo log jo organization apne past se learn nahi karte they can never succeed so it is important for organizations to learn from their past and then again they need to see the future as well because that is what they want to achieve if there's no future then then the organizations cannot be Similarly, your past and your future is interconnected as well because past is going to have a direct impact on your future. If in the past there is something good in the past, then you are more fearful or more anxious. Ho ho. So everything that you see in this triangle is interrelated with each other and that is for you. बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी होता है कि आप साइट, इनसाइट और फोरसाइट को ज़हन में रखते हुए अचीवमेंट और गोल्स, अचीवमेंट ऑफ़ मिशंस की बात करें। Now to complete this journey, the professional has to move away and look at the work. Just like when you're in a jungle, if you're standing under the tree, can you look at the jungle? No, you cannot. You'll just look at the tree or tree भी आपको, you will not be able to look because you're going to have a, a backache. On the other hand, if you want to look at the tree, and more importantly, if you want to look at the forest, you have to be away from the forest. You can see the entire forest and you can grasp the beauty and see the how big it is, how nice it is. You're just in awe. Get my point? If you to the forest, you have to move away from it and then look at it. If you have to look at the jungle ke beech mein jaakar, you want to look at it all that you're going to see is a tree and that tree is also going to be too big that you can't right so what the managers need to do is that they need to move away from the organization and look at what they've done what they've achieved what what they've got because jab piche se cheez aati hai tabhi aapko pata chalta for example um 
اگر آپ کو چیز اگر آپ کو چیز بنا رہے ہوں سی رہے ہوں اتنی قریب ہوتی ہے کئی دفعہ آپ کو نا اس میں اس کی امپرفیکشن جو چیزوں تھے نظر نہیں آتے بٹ وین یو ہیو اٹ لائک دس دین یو ایگزیکٹلی سی اچھا اس میں یہ بھی مسئلہ یہ بھی مسئلہ یہ بھی مسئلہ یہ بھی مسئلہ دیٹ از وائی اگر آرگنائزیشن اگر آرگنائزیشن میں آپ کے پروفیشنل اور مینیجر مستقل بیچ میں رہیں گے تو موسٹ پرابلی دے ول ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو سی دا پرابلمس ان سائڈ دا آرگنائزیشن سو اٹ از ایکسٹریملی امپورٹنٹ فار آرگنائزیشن ٹو فار فار پروفیشنل ان دی آرگنائزیشن ٹو موو بیک اینڈ دین لک ایٹ دی انٹائر آرگنائزیشن ٹو سی وے دا آرگنائزیشن از دیٹ مینس دے ہیو ٹو لرن ٹو ڈیلیگیٹ اینڈ دے ہیو ٹو لرن ٹو لیٹ گو ٹو ڈو انٹیلیجنٹ ورک بیکاز اف دا مینیجر از ناٹ ڈوئنگ دیٹ تو پھر مینیجر کرے گا کیا کہ وہ نٹی گٹی ڈیٹیل میں بیٹھا رہے گا چھوٹے چھوٹے ڈیلی ڈیلی کے کام اور پھر جب وہ ڈیلی کے کام کرے گا تو اسٹریٹیجک تھنکنگ ہی نہیں کر سکے گا سو اٹ از ایکسٹریملی امپورٹنٹ فار دا مینیجر ٹو ڈیلیگیٹ to empower to let go and just to observe and to see and and and, and to think true leaders will be alert and relaxed to give the right direction and then that is what makes you a true leader that is the difference between a true leader and maybe not a leader because a person is a true leader when he learns to delegate when he learns to let go and when he is relaxed enough because jab aap aap daily operations ko chhodoge tabhi aap itna relaxed hoge ki aap important decisions sahi le sako strategic planning kar sako strategic decisions le sako the people have to stand by values and others will follow and again jo humne pehle bhi baat ki ke when you want کہ جی آپ کا ویلیو سسٹم آرگنائزیشن میں اسٹرانگ ہو اور وین یو وانٹ ادر ان دا آرگنائزیشن ٹو فالو دا سیم ویلیو سسٹم یو نیڈ ٹو ہیو یور ٹاپ مینیجر بلیونگ ان دا ویلیو اگر آپ چاہتے ہیں کہ پوری آرگنائزیشن میں کوئی چیز ہو اگر آپ چاہتے ہیں کہ پوری آرگنائزیشن میں کوئی سسٹم فالو ہو کوئی رول فالو ہو یو وڈ وانٹ یور top managers to follow the rule first you will want your professionals to follow the rules first you would want your senior management to follow the rules first that means that when people when professionals when managers uh, stand by their values automatically others will also follow basic values are universal as a stem from the depth of a depth of human existence that means ki maine keh rahe ki values for rakhungi basic jo values are they going to be the same chahe wo aap aap america mein chale jaye aap africa mein chale jaye aap europe ki baat kare aap asia mein aa jaye aap india mein chale jaye pakistan bhutan sri lanka vietnam in sub countries mein irrespective aap ki company choti hai badi hai medium size hai sole proprietor hai partnership hai corporation hai the values that these people are going will have will be the same why because values stem from basic human existence i have a right of free, i have a right to freedom i have a right to free speech i have a right to breathe clean air i mean this duniya ke kisi bhi mulk mein hu you cannot take my rights away these rights away and similarly since these rights stem from my very existence they're going to be the same across the globe and when they're going to be the same across the globe that means every organization irrespective of where they operate need to look into all these uh, rights and see if they are fulfilling these rights or are they uh, uh, what are they doing to fulfill these rights or wo kis tarike se in rights ko manage kar rahi hain so that is what this is now the last thing that we're going to talk about is before we're almost ending our chapter is about the holistic growth professionals cannot work within the respective areas and believe the development would happen ye ho hi nahi sakta ke ji managers and professionals apne jagah pa kaam kare and automatically some mysterious hand ki humne pehle baat ki thi and automatically believe ke ji cheeze ho jayengi can magic of the marketplace resolve the problems of the missions اور اور پیپل ہو لیو بلو دا پاورٹی لائن کیا یہ ہو سکتا ہے فار ایگزامپل کہ جی ہم اگین میجک آف دا مارکیٹ پلیس کیا ہے میجک آف دا مارکیٹ پلیس یہ ہے کہ جی جب ہم مارکیٹ اکانومی کی بات کرتے ہیں واٹ از مارکیٹ اکانومی مارکیٹ اکانومی از ایٹ دا فورسز آف ڈیمانڈ اینڈ سپلائی ول ول ڈیسائڈ ایوری تھنگ واٹ از ٹو بی پروڈیوسڈ ہاؤ مچ از ٹو بی پروڈیوس واٹ از ٹو بی سپلائڈ ہاؤ مچ از ٹو بی سپلائڈ ایٹ واٹ پرائز آر وی گوئنگ ٹو سیل ایٹ واٹ پرائز آر وی گوئنگ ٹو سپلائی ہاؤ ول دا اکانومی بی مینج every small or big decision is taken by the forces of demand and supply right now if that happens and do you think can this magic of marketplace resolve the problems that those millions of people are facing who are below the poverty line 
جب ہم کہتے ہیں کہ جو فری مارکیٹ اکانومی اور مارکیٹ اکانومی ہونی چاہیے اور ڈیمانڈ سپلائی وہ بندہ جس کو کھانا نہیں مل رہا گھر نہیں ہے کپڑے پہننے کے لیے نہیں ہے بچے ہیں اس کے دیر زو ایجوکیشن کیا اس کو کچھ فرق پڑتا ہے ڈیمانڈ سپلائی کا اس کے پاس تو پیسے ہی نہیں ہے چیزیں خریدنے کے تو آئی ووڈ ہی کیئر اباؤٹ ڈیمانڈ سپلائی and and then again uh, uh, these are the issues that corporations have to think about and these are the issues that corporations have to have to look into to realize ki ki hum kya kar sakte hain inko hum hum kehte to hain ki ji organization ki jab aap market economy ki baat kar rahe hain then you talking in terms of organizations making decisions talking in terms of businesses deciding because demand supply automatically businesses ke paas aayegi to jab businesses ka sirf aur sirf demand supply aur market economies ki baat karenge then who is going to benefit aur how will those people benefit who are living below the poverty line because per market economy mein sirf demand supply money profit profitability revenue ki hi baat hogi wahan par corporate social responsibility ki ethical ethics ki justice ki trust ki baat nahi hogi because all that they will be concerned about is share all this but now we've moved a step forward we've moved away from the concept of shareholders and we're talking about stakeholders now the process of globalization should have a human face so when i say globalization it it should have a human aspect to it yes it it makes you know, globalization results in bigger markets yes globalization results in in reduced risk yes globalization results in in uh, uh, less expensive uh, raw material yes uh, globalization is going to result in is less expensive uh, cost of production but then all these things uh, at the cost of humans or at the cost of communities or at the cost of societies no we cannot take that so when you're saying ki ji aapne pakistan mein carpet industry ki baat karni hai and there are kids who are making carpets and then they have breathing issues because wo sab inhale kar rahe hote hain you need to think about ki acha business ki baat karte hain globalization ki baat karte hain but aapke kaam ka ke business ka humans pe kya asar pad raha hai and when you're talking about tanneries and then you're talking about ki ji wahan pe itne chemicals use ho rahe hain to kya workers ne proper safety gear pehna hai اگر نہیں پہنا اچھا میں یہ لیدر دنیا کے ہر کونے میں بھجوا رہا ہوں بٹ واٹ ڈسٹرکشن گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ٹو دی انوائرمنٹ واٹ پرابلم از اٹ گوئنگ ٹو کریٹ فار دا کمیونٹیز واٹ ایشوز ول اٹ واٹ واٹ نیگیٹو ایشوز ول اٹ ریز فار دا سوسائٹی آپ کو یہ سوچنا پڑے گا بیکاز اکنامک گروتھ ہیز ٹو بی شیئرڈ جب آپ اکنامک گروتھ کی بات کرتے ہیں تو آپ یہ صرف نہیں کرتے کہ جی اونلی منی فار دا آرگنائزیشن نو you need to share your economic growth with everybody in the society with everybody who's around you with people who are working with you with people who are living in communities around you with people who are generally living in the society in which you're operating and that is what the is the basic jab bhi hum impact of csr ki baat karte hain on businesses and impact of uh, your dilemmas in these sare confusion ya gray areas hain chahe aap ہولسٹک گروتھ کی بات کر لیں مینز اور اینڈس کی بات کر لیں پروفیشنلس کی بات کر لیں آپ 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 ویلیو سسٹم کی بات کر لیں آپ آپ اسکل ڈیولپمنٹ یا ویلیو ڈیولپمنٹ کے پرابلمس کو کو دیکھ لیں یہ سب ایسی چیزیں ہیں جو کہ سی ایس آر کے کانسیپٹ میں جو کہ بزنسز کے آپریشن کے کانسیپٹ میں گرے ایریاز ہیں جو کہ پراب جو کہ کنفیوژن ایڈ کرتے ہیں ہم کیا کریں اسکل ڈیولپمنٹ اور ویلیو ڈیولپمنٹ مینس اور اینڈس پروفیٹیبلٹی اور واٹ شیئر ہولڈرز اور اسٹیک ہولڈرز سو ان سب چیزوں کے بارے میں آپ کو ایز اے اسٹوڈنٹ اسٹڈنگ اے کورس ان کارپوریٹ سوشل ریسپانسبلٹی یو شوڈ نو دیٹ دیز آر دا ایریاز وچ کین کاز کنفیوژن تاکہ کل کو جب آپ جا کر کسی سے ڈسکشن کرتے ہیں یا آرگنائزیشن میں جا کر جاب کرتے ہیں یا اپنا بزنس فارم کرتے ہیں آپ کو پتا ہو کہ آپ کو ان ایشوز کے ساتھ ان گرے ایریاز کے ساتھ ان کنفیوژنس کے ساتھ کیسے ڈیل کرنا ہے فائنلی ہم اسٹیک ہولڈرز ٹریڈ آفس کی بات کرتے ہیں وائل امپلیمنٹنگ دا اسٹیک ہولڈرز تھیوری دا ٹریڈ آف از بٹوین اسٹیک ہولڈرز دا ٹریڈ آف بٹوین اسٹیک ہولڈرز از یو کین ناٹ کیپ پیپل ہیپی اسٹیک ہولڈرز تو بہت سارے ہیں چار کلاسیفیکیشن ہیں ہر کلاسیفیکیشن میں گیس منیمم تین یا چار لوگ منیمم تین یا چار گروپس ہیں تین چھ نو بارہ ہاؤ کین یو پی کیپ آل دیز پیپل ہیپی آپ گھر میں رہتے ہیں دو آپ کے بھائی بہن ہیں آپ ان کو خوش نہیں رکھ سکتے پرابلمس اینڈ کنفیوژنس اینڈ اینڈ کانفلکٹ آف انٹرسٹ آ جاتا ہے کوشچن اتنے سارے اسٹیک ہولڈرس کو آپ کیسے خوش رکھیں گے اتنے سارے اسٹیک ہولڈرس کی رائٹس کو آپ کیسے فلفل کریں گے ہاؤ کین یو میٹ دا ڈیمانڈس آف آل دی اسٹیک ہولڈرز ایکولی ناؤ ٹو 
ریزالو دس ایشو ٹو ریزال دس پرابلم کے جی اتنے سارے اسٹیک ہولڈرز ہیں ہم ان کے ساتھ کیا کریں ڈونلسن اینڈ پریسٹن نائنٹین نائنٹی فائیو میں دے پرپوز تھری یوزز آف دا اسٹیک ہولڈرس ماڈل واٹ آر دا یوزز آف دا اسٹیک ہولڈرس ماڈل دا یوزز ویز ڈسکرپٹو انسٹرومینٹل اینڈ نارمیٹو اور نارمیٹو یوزج آف دا اسٹیک ہولڈرس ماڈل ڈسکرپٹو یوزج آف دا اسٹیک ہولڈرس ماڈل اسٹیٹس ایٹ helps to understand how corporations are organized and managed. So whenever you're using the stakeholders theory with respect to the descriptive, uh, uh, through, if, if you're seeing the stakeholders theory through this descriptive lens, then you're going to understand how the organization is managed and how organization is organized. Ho rahi. Description of the organization and what people believe their roles are. So it's basically going to describe what the organization is going to do. It's basically going to describe what the organization is all about. And it's basically going to tell you what are the various roles being performed by various persons. So basically, when you descriptive aspects of uh, stakeholder theory, ko dekhte hai, all that you will be concerned about is um, most probably the shareholders or the stockholders and the employees because this is what you uh, this is aapka entire jo cheez hogi wo yahi hogi now when you are looking at the stakeholders model with respect to instrumentality then you see how stakeholders are a practical method of earning profits phir aap ye sochna shuru ho jate ho ki jab aap stakeholders ki rights ki baat karte ho when you talk about meeting the demands of the stakeholders then you're not only or you should not only be concerned about increased expenses you should also be concerned about okay that's a way of earning profits aap jab apne stakeholders ki rights ko fulfill karte hain then what you're doing is that that's just a way that's just a mean of achieving profits or getting profits and the third is normative Uh, view of um, the stakeholders model now when you do that it relates to the interest of stakeholders which should be promoted for the sake of cooperation so normative is just a better version of this whereby what you're doing is where you're relating or you're thinking about the interest of the stakeholders which should be promoted for the sake of cooperation because if you're going to keep your stakeholders happy that means again stakeholders ko khush karne ke liye aap aap you yes extrinsic cheesiness when involved hongi but basically trust involved hoga now when the trust is going to be involved with reference to stakeholders and automatically like relationships develop hongi now when relationships are going to be developed and with reference to trust and commitment and integrity and value system you're going to have long term relationships with your uh, stakeholders now whenever you're going to have long term relationships with the stakeholders that's going to benefit the corporation for example let's talk about suppliers long term relationship with stock, uh, suppliers is going to mean better credit uh, conditions for you long term relationships with customers is going to mean ki aapki brand loyalty zyada hogi aapke customers aap hi ki product khareedenge switch nahi karenge long term relationships with employees is going to mean ki you're going to have low turnover rate in your organization long term relationship with government is going to mean that you're going to have uh, companies friendly uh, industry industry friendly policies for your company long term relationship with your uh, maybe pressure groups is going to have a uh, good long term relationship with pressure group this would mean that they're going to advocate um, the for your products and they're going to compel people to use your products because your products are safe for the environment or or any other thing so that is how your long term relationships with every group of stakeholder chahe wo stake stockholder ho ya pressure groups ho chahe wo primary social uh, stakeholder ho ya wo aapka secondary non social stakeholder ho if you will have long term relationships with your stakeholders they are going to benefit the corporation only sabka fayda hai it's a win win situation for all now mitchell in 1977 suggested that the importance or the stakeholders can be judged from the parameters of power legitimacy and urgency right now power is the ability to influence organization decisions making and actions legitimacy rel relates to how far the organization perceives the activities of stakeholders as appropriate and desirable and urgency as the word suggests judges the importance of stakeholders claim to immediate action so mitchell basically said that the importance of stakeholders can be judged from the from three things aapko ye aapko ye kaise pata chale because abhi hum question kya raise kare ki ji 
इतने सारे स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं हमको कैसे पता कि और इतने सारे स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं हम सबको इक्वली ट्रीट नहीं कर सकते हम सबकी डिमांड्स को इक्वली ट्रीट नहीं कर सकते इफ दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम दैट व्हाट वी नीड टू डू इज टू रिजॉल्व दिस इशू वी नीड टू रियलाइज ए कौन ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है और कौन कम इंपॉर्टेंट है बिकॉज देन बेस्ड ऑन देर इंपॉर्टेंस हम सबको उतना टाइम देंगे यस yes, उत, उतनी डिमांड्स हम लोगों की मीट करेंगे क्वेश्चन हम ये कैसे पता करेंगे कौन कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है नाउ टू रिजोल्व दिस इंपॉर्टेंस इशू वट वी कैन डू इज कि हम हम तीन चीजों से Uh, हम स्टेक होल्डर्स को जज कर सकते हैं पावर लिजिटमेसी एंड अर्जेंसी पावर इज द एबिलिटी टू इन्फ्लुएंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिसीजन मेकिंग एन एक्शन सो स्टेक होल्डर इज गोइंग टू बी पावरफुल इफ दैट ग्रुप और दैट इंडिविजुअल कैन इन्फ्लुएंस द डिसीजन मेकिंग ऑफ द कंपनी सो यू कैन से स्टेक द स्टॉक होल्डर्स आर वेरी पावरफुल स्टेक होल्डर्स बिकॉज उनका डिसीजन जो है वो ऑटोमेटिकली रिफ्लेक्ट होता है ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के डिसीजन मेकिंग में या दे कैन इन्फ्लुएंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिसीजन मेकिंग सिमिलरली एम्प्लॉयज कैन बी पावरफुल स्टेक होल्डर्स एज वेल जिनके पास बहुत सारी पावर है ऑन दी अदर हैंड सप्लायर्स कैन बी वेरी पावरफुल स्टेक होल्डर्स एज वेल बिकॉज दे कैन ऑल्सो इन्फ्लुएंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिसीजन मेकिंग गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी पावरफुल स्टेक होल्डर The second uh, uh, parameter for judging uh, or for prioritizing the uh, stakeholders is legitimacy. That relates to how far the organization perceives the activities of stakeholders as appropriate and desirable. Organization का perspective क्या है stakeholders के बारे में वो क्योंकि वो हर stakeholder के बारे में क्या सोचती हैं कि उनके पास कि उनकी activities सही हैं legal हैं ऐसा कर सकते हैं या नहीं कर सकते So, अगर हम कहते हैं कि जी प्रेशर ग्रुप्स जो हैं वो रेगुलेशन बना रहे हैं तो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर गोइंग टू से नो दे कैन डू दैट इट्स द गवर्नमेंट विच रेगुलेट्स इज द गवर्नमेंट विच मेक्स लेजिस्लेशन नॉट द प्रेशर ग्रुप्स सो दैट इज वॉट लेजिटिमेसी मीन्स कि कौन सी एक्टिविटी स्टेक होल्डर्स की ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रिसीव करती हैं सही या गलत फाइनली अर्जेंसी इट बेसिकली जज इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ स्टेक होल्डर्स क्लेम टू इमीजिएट एक्शन के जी इट बेसिकली रिफ्लेक्ट के जी अगर प्रेशर ग्रुप्स कहते हैं कि ये काम कर लो तो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन उस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन को कितना अर्जेंट समझती हैं स्टॉक होल्डर्स कहते हैं कि ऐसा कर लो तो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉरन कर लेंगी प्रेशर ग्रुप्स कहेंगे कि ऐसा कर लो तो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सोचेंगी समझेंगे कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज को स्टडी करेंगी और फिर उसको इम्प्लीमेंट करेंगी सो ऑटोमेटिकली अर्जेंसी फर्क हो जाती है ना बेस्ड ऑन विच स्टेक होल्डर्स डेमोन्स्ट्रेट बेस्ड ऑन ऑन विच एट्रीब्यूट द स्टेक होल्डर्स डेमोन्स्ट्रेट रादर बेस्ड ऑन हाउ मेनी ऑफ दीज एट्रीब्यूट्स द स्टेक होल्डर्स डेमोन्स्ट्रेट वी कैन क्लासीफाई द स्टेक होल्डर्स एज लेटेंट एक्सपेक्टेंट एंड डिफिनेटिव लेटेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स आर दो जिनमें इन तीन पावर लेजिटमेसी और अर्जेंसी में से सिर्फ एक एट्रीब्यूट होता है expectant are those stakeholders who have two of these attributes they either have power or urgency or they'll have legitimacy or power but they'll just have two attributes and definitive are those group of stakeholders who have all of these powers they are they're powerful they they have they are high on legitimacy and they are high on urgency so when i say sh- shareholders they are a definitive group of uh, of stakeholders when i say employees they're also they can be either expectant or definitive when i talk suppliers they are again a uh, uh, very definitive uh, group of stakeholders when i say government again they also they are also a definitive set of uh, stakeholders when i say competition competition can be a latent set of uh, or a latent group of stakeholders so depending upon ke kaun se group ke paas in teeno mein se power legitimacy or urgency mein se kitni attributes hain aapki organization jo hai in teeno cheezon mein classify ho sakti hai then the organization can decide how it would engage with various stakeholders because With reference to these three classification, आपने अपने स्टेक होल्डर्स को प्रायोरिटाइज कर दिया आपको एग्जैक्टली exactly पता चल गया कि आपके स्टेक होल्डर्स जो हैं वो किस किस लेवल के जो लेटेंट होंगे आप उनको सबसे कम अटेंशन देंगे सबसे आखिर में अटेंशन देंगे जो एक्सपेक्टेंट होंगे दे गोइंग टू बी राइट इन द मिडल फॉर यू और जो आपके डिफिनेटिव स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं दे द वन जिनको जिनको आप इमीजिएटली डील करेंगे और सबसे पहले डील करेंगे Last is that a framework for making the trade-off is offered by Jensen. This is in 2006, the most recent. He calls it the enlightened value maximization theory. Now, the stakeholders theory directs corporate managers to serve many masters. 
stakeholders theory generally you get the idea that you should keep your stakeholders uh, you should value your stakeholders and you should try to fulfill the needs and the rights and the uh, wants of your stakeholders and and consider ke ji aap unko generally agar main in layman word baat karu stakeholders theory says it you need to keep your stakeholders happy now stakeholders humne pehle decide kar liya that there's so many different kinds of stakeholders from primary social to uh, secondary non social question how can you keep all of them happy and then each one of them would have a different set of needs would have a different set of wants would have a different set of urgency abhi karo isi baat karo sabko alag alag cheeze chahiye now when you have so many masters so many bosses so many people who can rule you result confusion chaos conflict conflict disagreement inefficiency ye sab cheeze us is situation mein hongi we cannot maximize the long term market value of the organization if we ignore or mistreat any important constituency ye bhi fact hai ki agar aap in sare stakeholders mein se kisi ek important ka stakeholder par tawajjuh na dein ya kisi ek important stakeholder ke bare mein na soche then your organization can never go for long term increase in their market value agar aapne apni market value ko profitability ko growth ko revenue ko increase karna hai long term it is important that you keep your important uh, stakeholders happy and satisfied Now, the value criteria would help the organization to decide the trade off more effectively you jo jo, jo tabhi is particular theory ko aap enlightened value maximization theory kehte hain you need to have the value criteria you need to realize ke har stakeholder ki kitni value वैल्यू है और हर स्टेक होल्डर कितना इनपुट प्रोवाइड करता है इन टर्म्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लॉन्ग टर्म मार्केट वैल्यू बिकॉज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की लॉन्ग टर्म मार्केट वैल्यू इज बेसिकली डिराइव फ्रॉम द वैल्यू दैट द स्टेक होल्डर्स आर प्रोवाइडिंग सो यू एन एज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नीड टू सी कि हर स्टेक होल्डर कितनी इनपुट प्रोवाइड कर रहा है इन टर्म्स ऑफ द total market value that the organization has and jo stakeholder jitni value input provide karega organization mein automatically us stakeholder ki utni hi zyada importance hogi aur wo utni hi zyada us aapki jo 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 aapne chain banayi hai wo utni hi zyada uske upar aayega now Jensen also cautioned that stakeholders theory can play in the hand of special interest groups who would legitimize using resources for their own good under the guise of stakeholders welfare so this person also very wisely said ke bhai when you're using stakeholders you can have people jo ke is particular theory ko misuse kar sakte hain and then those particular people can can ask for a lot of resources and once those resources will be given at their disposals those people can misuse those resources in the disguise that they're helping the society so प्रॉब्लम क्या होगी अगर आप ज्यादा स्टेक होल्डर्स थ्योरी पर बिलीव करेंगे और उसमें ये सारी प्रायोरिटाइजेशन नहीं डालेंगे और वैल्यू की बात नहीं करेंगे कि इंस्टेड ऑफ डिवाइविंग गुड फ्रॉम द स्टेक होल्डर्स थ्योरी हमें ज्यादा नुकसान होगा स्टेक होल्डर्स थ्योरी से सो वी मस्ट सेट आर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो दैट इट इज मोटिवेटेड टू सीक वैल्यू एंड मेक स्ट्रैटेजीज टू रेज वैल्यू सो द crux of jensen's uh, enlightened value maximization is that hame apni organization ko aise organize karna chahiye hame apni organization ko aise develop karna chahiye we should make such processes in the organizations we should make such systems in the organization which will motivate people to one seek value create value and make strategies to raise value and increase value so basically purpose aur phir organizations ko usi lihaz se kaun sa stakeholder kitni zyada value creation kar raha hai aur kitni zyada value ko raise kar raha hai aap usi lihaz se usko prioritize karna shuru kar dete hain and that is how you are managing all those stakeholders that are at the disposal of the organization now with this particular slide we come to the end of our uh, lecture and uh, a, a quick recap but i'm not ending my lecture just now i need to show you uh, the website for unilever pakistan and we're going to just see ke unka jo corporate social responsibility initiative hai wo kaisa chal raha and how much importance do they give to their corporate social responsibility initiative just a quick recap what we've done in this chapter is we we, we basically talked about the various dilemmas faced by the business and the impact of csr on business and we talked about means and ends and the uh, right and wrong and and skill and value development and 
and and we talked about what should the professionals do or what is expected of the professionals and we talked about empty plenty and we talked about uh, how to manage or what do statements like uh, for survival of the fittest ye inka impact kya hota hai businesses par and then we finally and in the last we talked about the fact that we have so many stakeholders question is how do we manage them and we talked about three different theories in the sense ke humne baat ki ke ji pehle humne baat ki ke hum kaise prioritize karte hain then we talked about ke ji aap unko various with reference to urgency legitimacy aap unko aap इन एलिमेंट्स पर आप उनको प्रायोरटाइज करते हैं कि हर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन या हर स्टेक होल्डर के पास कौन कौन सी एट्रीब्यूट है एंड बेस ऑन दिन एट्रीब्यूट आप उनको लेट एंड डिफिनेटिव के ब्रैकेट्स में डालते हैं एंड देन आप अकॉर्डिंगली उनको उनकी पावर के मुताबिक डील करते हैं एंड देन फाइनली वी टॉक अबाउट जेंसन एंड ही सेट दैट आपको इनलाइटेंड वैल्यू मैक्सिमाइजेशन की बात करनी वे बाय हम उस स्टेक होल्डर को उसी लिहाज से इम्पोर्टेंस देंगे विद रेफरेंस टू हाउ मच वैल्यू इज दैट स्टेक होल्डर क्रिएटिंग और हाउ मच वैल्यू Uh, is that stakeholder increasing? So depending upon कि कौन सा स्टेक होल्डर कितनी वैल्यू क्रिएट कर रहा है और कितनी वैल्यू को इंक्रीज कर रहा है आप ऑटोमेटिकली उसी के मुताबिक ऑर्गेनाइजे अपने स्टेक होल्डर्स को प्रायोरटाइज करते हैं द नेक्स्ट एंड आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट बिफोर आई एन माई लेक्चर फॉर टूडे इज बिकॉज आई टेल यू वेरी ऑफन आई नीड टू गूगल वेबसाइट टू सी देयर सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इनिशियटिव आई एम प्रिटी श्योर दैट यू हैवन डन दैट सो फार सो लेट्स डू इट टूगेदर दिस इज यूनी लीवर पाकिस्तान वेबसाइट एंड ऑल दैट यू नीड टू डू इज गो टू डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट यूनी लीवर डॉट पी के and you'll have this page now this is the main page for unilever pakistan and as you can see the most important thing is sustainable living at unilever and remember when we said sustainability ke organizations ki sustainability ke liye bahut zaruri hai corporate social responsibility initiatives this is exactly what we mean by that that for a company like unilever which is a huge big multinational they are giving so much importance to sustainable sustainability with reference to corporate social responsibility to aapko pata chal jata hai ki ji why is it so important today uh where do we go let's go here first Now this is the page hopefully it comes very soon this is what you're going to get now this is our approach to sustainability and they're basically talking about the various different initiatives that we have i i'm not going to go through a uh, sustainable living videos ki main baat nahi karungi main isme nahi jaungi but i would really 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 want you to go and see the sustainable living videos this was just tell you ke jo life work initiative hai with reference to going to schools and and teaching kids how to wash their hands that's that's corporate social responsibility and what benefit or what good has this particular initiative has led to but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this sustainability strategy we believe growth and sustainability go in hand in hand so that basically means that we believe that profitability and corporate social responsibility can go hand in hand the business case as we implement our plan we are recognizing that the business case for embedding sustainability into brand is strong why because the consumers want it a small but growing number of consumers around the world are seeking the assurance that the product that they buy are ethically sourced and responsibly made this is the example jab hum consumers as stakeholders ki baat karte hain that is the reason that companies today have to be socially responsible but because consumers want ethically sourced and responsibly made products retailers want it many retailers have sustainability many retailers have sustainability goals of their own and need the support of suppliers like unilever to implement them this collaboration is deepening the relationship we have with our customer with, with which we have with our customers again long term sustainable relation, relation chips with stakeholders it fuels innovation sustainability is a fertile area for both product and packaging innovation it is allowing us to deliver new products with new consumer benefits it helps to develop new markets it saves money this is important managing our operations sustainably reduces energy minimizes packaging and drives out waste it not only generate cost saving it can also save the consumer money so when i say sustainability and when i talk doing things ethically and when i say sourcing or or making things ethically or when i talk corporate social responsibility i do not mean increase expenses when you are doing these initiatives most probably that is going to result in reduced expenses uh, it is going to result in reduced expenses just like as what unilever says 
It inspires our people. Our vision to create a sustainable growing business is motivating for our employees and appealing to people who are considering joining Unilever. Today, proven research says that employees are more happy, employees are more motivated, and employees have better morale in organizations which are socially active, which are doing uh, corporate social responsibility initiatives, and which are doing things ethically. So it is important if you want your employees to be happy, to be motivated, and if you want your employees to have high morale, it is important that you do all these good things in your uh, organization. Next is, again, this is, this is something very, very important. As a business, we cannot choose between growth and sustainability. We need to grow if we are to have the resources to invest in renew renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, and product innovation. That's what we've talked about. It's not that the, the organization needs to be profitable in order for the organization to do things for the society and the community, and vice versa as well. So it's, again, circle up nickel that's the beauty of a circle ki aap circle mein you go around one without the other is incomplete so hum ye nahi kehte jo hum main bar bar kehti hu ki ji we not saying no profitability or less profitability we're saying yes a company has to be profitable but at the same time the company has to do things for the society so it is not about choosing between growth and sustainability we need to grow if we are to have if we if we, if the company needs to take up initiatives for the society and the community the company needs to grow the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan is helping drive both growth and profitability. The brands which are building sustainability into their offer all performed well. For example, Lifeway. Lifeway, uh, you, you see ads on the, on the television every day. They, they, the, the, these brands like Lifeboy, uh, Lifeboy and Concentrated Liquid Detergents and Comfort all grew double digits. That means that their growth rate tha, wo double digits. Mein tha. The eco-efficiency programs in our factories have contributed to deliver good levels of savings. Our efforts to reduce the amount of packaging we use uh, have also cut cost. In 2011, Unilever underlying sales growth was 6.5%. Its market share improved and its operating margin was broadly stable. We see no conflict between sustainable consumption and profitable growth. They are mutually supportive and not mutually exclusive. Embedding uh, sustainability. Only by embedding sustainability into our business will we succeed in reaching our targets. We are doing this in a number of ways. Our business strategy now includes sustainability at its heart. Remember when we were doing corporate social responsibility and corporate governance especially, we said that you need to incorporate these two in your long-term strategy and that is what Unilever is doing. We are measuring progress. Our brands and functional teams all have sustainability scorecards. They are reviewed quarterly by the Unilever leadership executive and so on and so forth let's see another thing here I was telling you about this non I'm just going to show it to you you need to go and see them yourself these are all small videos that they have and this one is should be of interest you to you because this relates to our country as well see how life is helping to spread the message of the importance of hand washing across Asia they, they, they have it so often in Pakistan that small little initiative how you wash your hands can get rid of so many other diseases that people are facing. So, a chota sa kaam aapke society ko kitna zada improve karta hai. So, please have a look at these uh, videos. They should be of interest to you. Let's see this. Sustainable living. Now, this is company set out, uh, set out a sustainable living plan committing to a 10-year journey towards sustainable growth. What makes our plan different is that it applies right across the value chain. We are taking responsibility not just for our own direct operation, but for our suppliers, distributors, and crucially, for our consumers who use our brands. The plan has 60 targets and this is how and these are the areas jin pe wo kaam kare health and hygiene by 2020 we will help more than a billion people to improve their hygiene habits and we will bring safe drinking water to 500 million people this will help reduce the incidence of life threatening disease this is a small example ki jab hum kehte hain ki government ke saath corporations ko help karna hai because governments cannot alone do all this do you think koi bhi aise government hai jo itne zyada logon ko affect kar sake nahi hai. So that just shows you ki corporate social responsibility ki importance kitni hai. Today, 
it has huge proportions and then again i'm not saying ke hamari corporations nahi kare yes lot of companies like unilever for example are doing it but hum chahenge ke all our companies is are thinking in terms of these initiatives so i guess let's just end our chapter here and again i would try that after every lecture we just talk about a particular company taki hum bahut saari cheezon ko relate kar sakenge and and i guess it's going to make our course interesting as well so till next time allah hafiz